they expect something like this to be in Italy or in California, but it's, it's really cool to be able to show those folks who've never been out here before what Idaho country looks like. And Idaho country looks like rolling hills and winding rivers, creating the perfect climate for perfect vino. In fact, Idaho's wine industry contributes an estimated $210 million to the state's economy. It's a good spot down there by the Snake River. And as Idaho keeps growing, well, so does that number that you mentioned. Morgan, tonight, Shira Matsuzawa gives us a taste of Idaho's flourishing wine country. When you think of wine country, many of us might think of Napa Valley in California, but Idaho has its own wine industry. So today we're in the car and we're ready to explore. For wineries across Idaho, it's harvest season and the staff are hard at work. Right now they're processing the fruit before putting it into these barrels. But this is how it all starts. Row after row, vineyards as far as the eye can see. This sprawling area in Caldwell is known as the Sunny Slope Wine Trail. According to the Idaho Wine Commission, Idaho is one of the fastest growing wine regions in the United States. In 2011, there were 40 wineries in Idaho. That number has since increased by 75%. There are 70 wineries here in Idaho, and the oldest and largest is right here at St. Chapelle. They started making wine in 1975, and this property stands on 44 acres. Well, essentially, we're the pioneers on the hillside here. We Kelly Meyer is the regional manager for Sawtooth Winery and St. Chapelle Winery in Caldwell. We are still the Wild West of wine country in the Northwest. Um, we are, are growing. We're a budding wine industry. That growth is something the Idaho Department of Commerce is tracking. It's kind of an unexpected travel experience for, for folks. Matt Borud is the Marketing and Innovation Administrator at the Idaho Department of Commerce, which oversees the Visit Idaho brand. He says interest in Idaho's wine country started pouring in between 2013 and 2015. I think in our last survey, we had 11% of Idaho travelers indicated they were interested in a, in a winery or tasting room type of an experience. As the owner of Snake River Wine Tours, Samantha Maxey has watched Idaho's wine country gain popularity since she first began giving tours four years ago. Well, at that time, uh, the wineries definitely were not as busy. You could sometimes walk into a winery on a weekend and just get a tasting on your own. Uh, now you definitely need a reservation on the weekends. And the people touring are coming from all over the country. Boise has become a destination, so we see a lot of people that come here regionally from Phoenix, from Washington, from Oregon, a lot of people from California, which is great, but um, I'd say right now it's still a big local community, but we get a lot of out-of-town guests, which is really great for Idaho tourism as a whole. Um, they're putting more heads in beds in Boise. Um, they're going out to more restaurants downtown. Uh, it's, it's been really great. Idaho has three AVA regions, areas designated just for grape growing. The American Viticultural Association recognizes various regions across the country. Um, Idaho has three. We've got the Sunny Slope area out in, in Caldwell area. We've got the Eagle Hills area, also much smaller, but also kind of in the Treasure Valley area, and then the Lewis and Clark Valley up north. The Eagle Foothills AVA um, was started by Martha in 2000 and 13. Martha and Gary Cunningham are the owners of three horse ranch vineyards. Corey Sprout is the vineyard's winemaker. He says they were the first winery in the Eagle Foothills. Currently, there are five in the area. As someone from Napa Valley, Corey says Idaho's wine country reminds him of another California region. I think this area is a lot like Sonoma was back in the 70s and 80s, where it was a lot of farmer winemakers something Ron Bittner is all too familiar with. He and his wife own Bittner Vineyards on the Sunny Slope Wine Trail. It's been fun to watch the industry grow and is continuing to grow. They began planting grapes in 1981 when there were only about five wineries at the time. And a lot of people made fun of the four or five of us that were planting wine grapes because they assumed that we were gonna make potato wine. And now, 
a lot of winemakers are being recognized, whereas before we weren't. Just 40 minutes away from the Sunny Slope Wine Trail is the Urban Wine District in Garden City, and that's where we're headed now. And there's about seven or eight wineries within a couple of miles of each other. And the first one we're visiting is Potter Wines. So some wineries have their own estate vineyard. Um, you know, they've got some land somewhere where they grow their own grapes. We do not have um, our own vineyard. We're an urban winery. Crystal Potter is the co-owner of Potter Wines, as well as the chairman of the Idaho Wine Commission. She and her husband got into the wine industry when they grew grapes in their backyard and started creating their own wine. Our industry here is still small comparatively to some of those, you know, California industries and even Washington. But um, the really beautiful part about the industry here is because we're small, we have a great um, way to control our quality of wines. So we're just leaving Potter Wines and down the street is Talia. Earl Sullivan is the co-owner and the head winemaker there. And he tells me that he and his wife actually started making wine back in 2008 in Washington. And then in uh 2011 we started making wine in Idaho and then in 2016 we built this building and moved in here to kind of continue our expansion and we'll be about 10,000 cases this year so it's a big change from 50 cases in 2008. Those cases are shipped to customers in 28 states who are part of Talia's wine club. At St. Chapelle their wines can be bought in states across the country Kelly says they've seen a dramatic change in where their clientele is visiting from. We are seeing probably, we used to see it was probably 80% local and 20% out of town. Um, I would say we're, we're now probably seeing 60% um, from out of town um, and then still a very heavy local following. But again, with an influx of people moving here, we are seeing a lot of people from California, which, by the way, I love it because they love wine. <laughs> I always get excited when, you know, there's a couple things that we hear a lot in Idaho tourism, and, and, you know, one of them is, oh my God, I had no idea. As the last grape is picked from the vine and aged in barrels, a reminder, what you see here won't be bottled and ready to drink for another six months to four years, depending on the wine and the winemaker. Those grapes that you saw, you can come back and drink those in 2025. The winemakers want to stress the wine they're making isn't only accessible, but world class. In fact, many of them have, have either been recognized regionally or even internationally for their wines like Bittner and Talia. USA Today also just voted Snake River Wine Tours the number one wine tour in the country. They beat out companies in Napa Valley and Santa Barbara. As for the future of Idaho's wine country, everyone I spoke with said they believe it will continue to grow and the wines will get better. By the way, most Idaho wineries are open year round and coming up tomorrow night here on the news at 10 we're taking a look at how Idaho wines compare to wines in other countries like France. We're also taking a look at why the soil here in Idaho makes our wines extra special.